Under the direct orders of Stalin, Igor Khrushchev, a brilliant physicist known as the Beard, led the Soviet A-bomb team. They were determined to end the atomic monopoly America had held since the war. On the 29th of August, 1949, they succeeded. The shockwave approached and knocked on the roof of the bunker. One, two. As if a genie freed by us from the bottle, patted us and thanked us for releasing him from his long captivity. The nuclear arms race had begun. America readies itself for a nuclear attack. Times Square is its normal busy self in the last seconds before a daylight atom bomb drill. The siren's wail sends New York's inhabitants to shelter. All buses, taxis and autos discharge their passengers who are guided by wardens to shelters. Movement is rapid but orderly. Housewives draw shades and turn off gas before proceeding to shelter zones in their own buildings. New York's subways provide most of the public shelters. Times Square is deserted two minutes after the alert. The speed with which the Soviets had produced an atomic bomb astonished America. I think what surprised us was that considering the devastation which had taken place in the Soviet Union as a result of the World War II, uh, we didn't think they would be able to amass the necessary infrastructure to develop the bomb, but they certainly did. And they, they clearly uh, were in our knicker, so to speak. Uh, more and more we learned how well they had infiltrated the, the whole of Manhattan Project. Some scientists working on America's first A-bomb, the Manhattan Project, believed that America should not have a monopoly on nuclear weapons. Klaus Fuchs, a German-born British citizen, was one. People used him as a babysitter. He was a very polite, very quiet individual. No idea at all that he had this dual personality or this dual endeavor. In January 1950, Fuchs was arrested in London and charged with passing atomic bomb designs to the Soviet Union. He was sentenced to 14 years for espionage. KGB agents believe that they brought over all the drawings and the scientists simply copied the information they brought back. Scientists say the intelligence data was very important the engineers were less enthusiastic. They said, so what if we had the information? How to make it, how to use it, that was not clear. The United States looked to its scientists to regain the lead. At the Los Alamos nuclear laboratories, they planned the hydrogen bomb. We thought at that time of atomic bombs as being limited in yield to approximately the yield that had been used in the war in Japan. Whereas we thought of hydrogen bombs as being absolutely unlimited in what the yield could be. And more specifically, we thought of the uh, hydrogen bombs as being a thousand times as big as atomic bombs, just as atomic bombs had been a thousand times bigger than the chemical bombs used in World War II. This enormous destructive power shocked Robert Oppenheimer, former leader of the Manhattan Project. 
He and several of his colleagues argued that such weapons put the whole world at risk. If there's another world war, the civilization may go under. We need to ask ourselves whether we're doing everything we can to avert that. America feared that if it didn't build an H-bomb, the Russians would. President Truman gave the go-ahead. The Pacific Atoll of Eniwetok was chosen to be the site of the world's first thermonuclear explosion. By 1952, Operation Ivy was ready. It required a huge refrigeration system, weighed over 82 tons and was 20 feet high. In less than a minute, you will see the most powerful explosion ever witnessed by human eyes. The blast will come out of the horizon just about there. And this is the significance of the moment. This is the first full-scale test of a hydrogen device. If the reaction goes, we're in the thermonuclear era. For the sake of all of us, and for the sake of our country, I know that you join me in wishing this expedition well. It is now 30 seconds to zero time. Put on goggles or turn away. Do not remove goggles or face burst until 10 seconds after the first light. Minus 10 seconds. Niner, eight, seven, six, five, -er. On November the 1st, 1952, the world's first hydrogen bomb exploded with a force equivalent to over 10 million tons of TNT. 1,000 times the power of the bomb dropped on Hiroshima. You don't know what heat is until you've seen the heat from a 10 megaton hydrogen bomb. It doesn't stop. It just gets hotter and hotter and you start to really worry, uh, even though you're 20 some miles away. And of course, the whole island disappeared too, which was subsequently very impressive. And the whole lagoon was just sort of a milky white. And then we were asked to go collect samples, so we got in a little motorboat with buckets and went charging into the crater, scooping up the radioactive material and taking it back for the chemists to analyze so we could determine the yield. But we were young and it was a lot of fun. While America was developing the hydrogen bomb, a conventional war had broken out in Asia. Korea is a small country, thousands of miles away. But what is happening there is important to every American. The fact that communist forces have invaded Korea is a warning that there may be similar acts of aggression in other parts of the world. Congress approved a $40 billion increase in the defense budget. Truman, reluctant to use nuclear weapons again in Asia, fought the communists in Korea with conventional weapons. In 1952, General Dwight D. Eisenhower, the former Supreme Allied Commander, campaigned to succeed Truman. Ike was determined not to get caught in any more conventional wars. Better, he thought, to threaten the use of America's growing nuclear arsenal to deter its enemies. Besides, you got more bang for your buck. Moscow was warned that any further aggression could involve massive retaliation. By 1954, Russia was changing. Stalin was dead, and a struggle for power was taking place between Nikita Khrushchev and Georgi Malenkov. Malenkov said, we have to warn our people and all of humanity that nuclear war threatens everyone with annihilation. It has to be avoided at all costs. Не допускать это. 
But Khrushchev saw this as an attempt to disarm and weaken the Soviet people. Later that year, the Soviet leadership witnessed a demonstration of their nuclear power. A 20 kiloton atomic bomb was dropped in the middle of a military exercise in Totskoya in the Urals. As the bomb exploded, troops were sent in to storm the radiated area. The Red Army was getting ready for nuclear war. I was a member of the assessment team for that exercise. I remember very well how Marshal Bulganin, the Minister of Defense, stated that nuclear weapons were not as frightening as we had been warned by the imperialists. American tests in the Pacific continued. 